The R6 Rockstars are back looking to reclaim their crown, but there's a certain NA team looking to turn their lights out. It's Dark Zero versus G2! with two men who know exactly what this environment feels like. They are soaking up the energy here. Ducky and Canadian join us here on the main stage. Ducky, when you look at the recent results, SI 2023, the group stages, do you feel like you've got their number? Yeah, I mean, I would only be fair to say that. You feeling confident? Is there anything you want to say to Canadian? He's standing right there. Of course I'm confident, but I respect my opponent. But of course I'm confident. Canadian, are you worried at all about recent results, or is this where you really come into your element here? A little louder. Pedi para vocês gritarem um pouco mais alto que ele não tá ouvindo. The pressure's on. This is what I live for. Ai, ele disse que ele vive por isso, por essa pressão. What he said. I, I, yeah. All right, Ducky, Canadian, best of luck to both of you. Take your seats as we get set for our first match up here. Nós somos Brazil. Say something. See you after the game. Whoa. <laughs> this is what I love about SI, Leo. Oh it is God. now time to get into this one. Let's cross over to our amazing casters. Yeah, we've always seen that to be quite important. There's basically two real approaches you have from this. Either you go for your majority near Geisha and Drum, or you're trying to take the back stairs under your control, leverage yourself into the side and try and get a plant in. But of course, as we find ourselves on the exhibition side of things, uh, you know, it is quite easy to take control of this top floor, of the, ex of the uh, restaurant area of the side, because, you know, it shouldn't be as heavily held as it otherwise is. And you instantly see that from the side of G2. They're realizing there's a lot of safe space to take, instantly starting to move through. There's even pinks coming in uh, on some of the G2 players out now, though, so there might be something waiting for them. Again, to throw the context towards the last time these two teams were on the Sedesi 2023, DZ only managed one attack round, yep. and it was their map pick, I believe, as well. It was flipped onto the other side. Here is that top take I talked about. The player on towards karaoke window, Canadian. He'll be reading all this. Now, at some point, the Solis can and probably will rotate with the support and structure to make sure that they have it locked in, just to try and play against it. There it is, but with the first trade down, Benja gets one, Canadian gets virtually There's the double down. Boy Wonder, the previous SI, is able to get himself into a bit of a strong arm contest here. Alamau taking control of Shrine, taking control, pushing along again. They've led in onto the black stairs, but NJR just pushing them back. That is how you take across the second story, almost like, as we said many times, securing Old Villa. Yeah, for sure. And as they're trying to push themselves through from Dragon House, the complete G2 team stacked up. Concussions being sent out to NJR, who's had an incredible tournament a so far. Located. Pushed back as the rotate comes down and the knee from the side of G to NJR might find himself in some uh, companion oh, soon, but aren't you aware of the fact that he's oh, out there? Zuno uses the impact. I don't think they know about Nave and MPR both being, being down here. I mean, this is going to turn into a moment. Now they know. There's the reveal. Uno with the swing round. They're being pinched. The shield's up and down, and Nave is down. Down. Finished off. <laughs> the roar of the crowd, and NJR is going to see if he can creep his way as Bolo hangs on for dear life inside the site, dancing either way. Bullied by a shield, the C4 gets the kill onto Alamau, Uno round at the back, the two versus one, NJR. You talked about his importance as a player, he cannot make it count in round one. Then go for something a little bit snappier, you can see Uno already on the cut-off window, the double window that 
screams all the way across what is a no man's land, almost forcing these rotates now before Pamba gets shot from one of the many angles or even underneath. It's always the difficulty when you're playing here. There's so many angles you have to worry about as NGR goes down. Not quite killed, but as the E on the pops, it's basically locking up any rotation. Oh. Pamba goes down as well as the second player. And then it's Uno that just wasn't able to connect on the third one. They're going for the pressure here, keeping it hot and ready. Bolo at least pulls one back with Alamau. Continuing the trend, you can see the deep rotate. Once again, Bolo alone on the site. Canadian trying to get there as quick as he can, but the E1D will pause his motion. Has a C4 to try and play in this situation, but look at G2 circling. All around, they've got control of the main stairs. They've got control of the site, 2-0. Oh. Such a strong start for G2, and again, just isolating these players and being quick with the entry engagement. See if they can keep a lock down here just a bit longer. Trying to go for some aggression early on, you know, bringing it back as well as he opens up the win now. Again, it was mentioned G2, the quickest team to make an entry engagement happen in the tournament. So they're looking to get that very first again. And sometimes it goes away from them. Before they started this, it was only a plus nine. Adam out out. on the quick breakthrough, but he's instantly broken back. Nate with the kill on the cover. That trying to get the blitz close, but it's a shot from Bolo. Okay, and Uno, at least with that glass rifle, stops some of it. But we find ourselves in an awkward pause. The players inside the site itself from both teams. They've got the kit there, but they want to cement this. One more kill from Benja tucked over. There goes Virtue. MJR at least gets the trade out of two versus two with our first attempt at plant. But at this point, it's because everybody has died so early. Canadian, the solid, too late to activate and stop it, but they do get the pinch onto Benja. Two versus one, two over the top. They've come to decide to go for the straight fight. The Glass is a very terrifying opponent to hit on range. They're dancing, but they find it. Dark Zero. The timeout has netted a first round by a world-class team here. How they can get themselves in, cause themselves troubles. Because even then, you know, it's a plant. They're playing what is essentially a sort of pocket player alongside the Blitz, the Glass over the back end. And they're going for a very quick bout of pressure. Again, look at the rotation of operators. Look at the different take. We've had this side how many times? And we've had as many different takes. And they were seeing the Osa coming out right now together with the Ying. Also the line, of course, being out there with the Grim for area denial. So this might just lean into becoming a quick round as Nave can spot it out. Now roughly where he is, he won deep didn't really spot him afterwards. So he's still around the main stairs area. He's getting a spot down onto the line though. Benja looking to take a fight. Needs to make sure he's leaning into it at the right time. Nave misses the opportunity to get the trade. The flashbang comes. Dancing Benja takes loads of damage as the E when he pops, but he stays alive most importantly. Two minutes left. He knows about the one player on the main stairs. He's just calling out that information to the rest of his team. Whereas the rest of G2 is looking to take oh. control. Off Geisha, one false stroke. He traded out though. Ducked and dived all the way. The battle of banging the drum is something that is louder. Here is Uno. He's hit the floor. The Pulse is just going to get themselves a little bit more time as they're going to see if they can find a stick. In the meantime, they have the window for support. Alamout doesn't stay with it because of that. Bolo gets the triple on the backboard, holding on towards Geisha's side. You can see the remaining G2 player is all the way on the other side of the take. They haven't got the breach on the top of the stairs. They're making a lot of noise, a lot of time, but you go into a firing line and it's manned by that man there returning to form, Bolo. Getting his head on. We go down for the first time towards barbecue. Ground floor, the kitchen site. See if it can sort of play against the rotation. If Dark Zero get this, what a huge swing of momentum it would have been. Of course, it would be a huge swing, but also kind of expect if, if, if G2 was able to continue that 2 0, that would have been a struggling moment there for Dark Zero. Like, again, three rounds, four rounds, kind of what you've been looking at right here to have yourself in a decent, uh, even half. So, them coming back to you already, that's great. If they can finish that off with a complete rotation, that's even better for them. But Nave with that Nitro Cell, he's trying to find a target. And it's either the Geisha balcony where it's going, or it's going outside the Peaceful Tree window. In and underneath, directly towards the site. Virtue on the prep line. You can see Doki's finding a fight, but Benja's found the site, and he's found it unoccupied. Virtue goes down, but I assume there it is. Benja in the top right. 
Gets the take, and that'll make a little bit of caution. Naif tears off the head of Doki. I'm surprised there's nothing in all chat on the back of that. The Zuno is going to put the word Diffuser is planted on everybody's screen. A pistol drop of four versus two. They have the vertical. This can be a well put together retake. Now it's just a single remaining player of Alamau all the way around. He's on the repel. He's expecting the pressure to come against them. There's the play against the kit. There's one. He's too far out for the second. DZ. The rotate of three. And of course, last time, as you mentioned, Darkseid we were only able to get a single round on the tech by their face G2 here. However, it was with a different roster as well. Nafe and Bola weren't on it. Nafe, of course, bringing a bit of that extra leadership into uh, the game as well for the side of Dark Zero. They've really sped up as a result as well. So it's a, it's a different kind of beast that G2 will be playing with here. They have the attention towards the top of the house. VIP stairs. Almost sense G2 there. I'm not saying slowing down their pace towards the site. They're not eyeing it up as hungrily, though, I think. They're sort of weighing and measuring every engagement. Virtue almost found one there. But Canadian's been able to slip himself around the back of a drone. Not sure if he's entirely sure. Now he will be. There's the call on the location. The pressure from underneath. Uno wants to catch him, but it's Doki that gets made for the meantime. The swing from under. With NJR getting one locked out, it's suddenly back and forth, exploding all over the map. NJR, he's trying to find the next fight onto Shrine Window, but it's better to get Bolo. A two versus two. The man of the moment yeah, of the previous round is locked out, with Canadian leaving just Virtue, the Aussie. Had a huge game against this country folk. Came out MVP. Cannot find the lockdown, a 4-2 half. This man said he wanted to be back on the stage and he's gonna take every round to get there. As I said, this is generally where they've sort of stepped up in the second half. Naif bringing the mid-round adaptations, bringing the extra conversation. A big brain from EU imported over to battle against, well, EU right now. He knows him through and through. Doki, here's the repel. No, someone's going to be out of the balcony. Almost gets tagged up. The Nitro Cell, believe. Yeah, missed out there. So Doki having to go for a bit more aggression. I'm not sure there was something looking to be tossed at. It could have been a Candela coming yep. through. Indeed, Pambo should be able to clear this one oh. up. Takes a little bit of damage, but the entry is theirs. Very clean oh, take there from Pamba. Knew the role of the Ying, knew the role of Candela. As you can hear that sort of. Echo, the cacophony of just on ammo. noise. Next. Symphony of destruction, and unfortunately for now, Doki is the first person to find himself on the wrong end of it. Alamau's trying to retake the territory. He wants to make sure that Dark Zero aren't comfortable, that they're always sort of losing and mistakes, because that was classically the best way to punish this Dark Zero team. Although aware of the fact there's another person inside, but a rotation towards the drum is going to be there. A lot oh. of damage! And the kill from Pamba shuts him down with the second Candela. Really making some good work out here for Dark Zero. They're both stacked, keeping each other covered. NJR might not know that he was only a flick away from the first fight, but he's hoping he gets that one. The second hop over, but there's the trade out, Uno. He'll probably be beating himself up. He wasn't ready for this engagement now. Ben just got to be ready for all of them. A one versus four with 40 seconds left. I know where he is. Done before, has a C4 in pocket. He's trying to lead into the first engagement. There it is, the kick goes cold. With 30 seconds, he just wants to get one more kill, you assume. Here it is, the rotate underneath. Play the C4 potentially on towards the doorway. It gets himself a little bit more security. Remember, they've got to get that kit back, and they've got to try and get the support onto the strike. The last Candela just catches the wing of a man who could get rid of it. The C4 ripped and ready to be loose. They've got to try and take this as a body's problem. They're not able to see him, but they find! Just at the tail end of it, that was almost a double collateral, which could have entirely changed the face of that round. G2 did not to have the conversation yet. They think they can swing this back. I mean, it's a first defense loss. However, this is their sort of map. This is where they wanted to bring the fight to it. Dark Zero, I think, would have prepared for this game. They have a skyscraper. They know how they want to get into the engagement, and it, it sort of adds those question marks. The quicker this game is, if these take it, the bigger you sort of look at that bank as the second map and go, okay, how much have you hidden this G2? Yeah, Here's the break. We get the roll, the start on the equipment. Didn't see the rotation of Doki, who happened to just breeze by at the right second there. They've lost the first moment. They've lost the player who pulled a couple of kills, a couple of kills previously. Countermeasure up! 
What are Dark Zero going to do here to try and get revenge? Big question EMP used out there, but Ben just stepping back wisely so he can continue to use those glasses. Harp Reach in the meantime coming down as well, but I believe it got tricked out. All right, no, actually opened up, so didn't hear the explosion. Canade with a great kill onto Venger, though. Brings it back to a four and four, but the rotation is out here from G2 now. They need to play T and karaoke. They do not need to play exhibition and office. They're going to try and hold and play against these long angles, see if they can get just the pull back. Remember, the pressure of time is on Dark Zero. They almost had things fall away from them in the four versus one because of the pressure of time, because of where they needed to be and, well, how little a time they left themselves to get there. Here, they're still eyeing up the main defenses of the site. You look towards the core of this map, along that line of drama I talked about, and Shrine, and, you know, the sort of terrace area. If you cannot get your way past it, you you will throw the round. You'll throw the ability to get the attack. They're still struggling to get the territory. 15, 20 seconds have now passed, and this is only when they're getting the intel on, well, where are they? Doki, he can just play this. Yeah, there's no more smoke canisters, though, so a push is definitely coming to shove. Flashbangs coming in, the EMPs as well. There's 10 seconds on the clock. When are they starting to move through? It's just flashbangs right now, and so he will find the very first. There's the swing. Canadian's doing his best. The donkey goes down. They flooded in before they're not right out by the dam. Built by G2. A one versus nobody goes through. Pulls it round. Gets some heat back in their favor. Finally stops. Dark Zero's round count of five in a row. They said, okay, that's about enough. It is way more head-to-head -head now. Now, you haven't mentioned it yet, but I think it's worth talking about the site selection here. Obviously, Swapping you're onto one of, I think, probably, and I'm just entirely throwing this into the air, statistically the least played site yeah, of any in the rounds. tournament. And it, we might see for good reason, G2. It's after a timeout. It's something that they often like to do, is play these throw the mental of your opponent's one. If your opponent is wired in, beelined onto the fight and they have expectations on the back of a loss, if you suddenly change the script, change the music and the tune and the rhythm of it, well, they'll fall over and trip on their own feet. That's the hope and the gamble. Now, you'll prep a hold on it, but it's the weakness of the site. It's this, the immediate lean-in that you can get on the prep swing. Uno's doing his best to hold off with the C4, but that double door is a risk. If he's on a drone here, it'll only take a little pinch and a swing to his left-hand side that might be about to pop through. It's a close fight. There's a player coming in behind him. Can he get a root out? He finds it. Not quite executed on. Pamba takes a lot of damage. We're only about 50 seconds left, and Bolo... Oh, he knows the engagement's there. Uno finally caught, however huge amount of time wasted. A lot of time wasted indeed, and you know, it is going to look like it's a complete horizontal approach that we see from the side oh, of Dark oh, Zero, oh. all stacked up for the double supply door, but they're opening up into the bathroom, so they're looking to just flop through. I mean, they have no other option. You could see both Canadian and Naif were sort of prepped up on the shoulder of Pamba saying, look, mate, there's our route A, let's take it. Through the head of one with Bender and Alamau, knocking them back against it. They're holding onto the corners. There's about to be a bit of a drop onto the hatch itself. At the same time, the C4 gets one. There's a catch for Venture. Big hands and a big round. The eighth time that that side got played and the seventh they got won. It is one of those offsides that we don't really see, as you just mentioned before, but it has this tendency of just being won by the defenders, and it's probably because of the fact that the attack hasn't been tested on this. I mean, it's a bit of a blessing. You can utilize the gadget in two ways. One is the one that is the default. Scan it and see where it is. But two, if you look it and you see some green footprints right next to a corner, you can be pretty confident you're going to have to swing that holding your click down. So the ground floor is being prepared now by Dark Zero, as you saw there, just cleared out. Cameras being removed, just removing any bit of information that G2 might be able to get from it. Whilst at the same time, the horizontal approach from the restaurant or top restaurant era is starting to come through. There's some shields they need to get rid of. And openings are being made as well, but it's going to be the Tubera that would freeze the exothermic on the opposite side. It's just going to slow things down just a little bit. Actually, I mean, it's the pressure of time. I talked about it before, the pressure of time. This will open, that gadget will activate, it doesn't destroy it. But the Zoto buys you that space. There's pressure underneath Alamau, and pressure in front of Alamau, but a bit of a missed moment there. They weren't entirely locked down. He's looking for a second fight, and he finds it. Alamau, two stories, oh! three stories. He's hitting them every single distance and direction from within.
within about a five foot space. And what an execution of an execution here, including the take onto the jackal. NJR gets one before getting a fate handed to him. D2, what a climb back. And suddenly we find ourselves in five, five, and dark zero after five consecutive rounds have lost their momentum completely, have lost their lead completely. Humber is using the Amaru, the Canadian, onto the Montaigne. This might just be an attempt at a plant in a quicker fashion than we would usually see. And as G2 is just setting themselves up again, I'm just wondering what is the plan that Dark Zero is going to be executing here? Is it just going to be a quick push? I mean, it, there's a plan here. It's the Monty. I know, I know. That's what I said before. There is a Monty, there is an Amaru, and there's a Grim. So what you would expect is the Grim to start shooting those bees, Amaru cause some havoc, and the Monty to go for a plant. But will G2 be ready for it? Will they respond before it can even get going? They have the Tuberau to slow things down and bring some pace. But to be honest, over the rounds, it's these pocket situations. I said they're finding corners, making things challenging. Oh! That is just poor timing, Alam out. Huge round before and a missed one this time. NJR gets Benjura, five versus three. Now, Pamba, with that operator in that position, has become a lot more dangerous. They can get themselves in and aggressive onto the site within a bit of a blink of an eye, especially with that supernova shotgun. There's a bit of the rotation, the motion. They know that they have the five versus three body advantage. They know they were five to two in round Changing advantage, match. and that has slipped away. They have to ensure this doesn't as well. If this slips over, it is absolutely detrimental for Dark Zero. So as you mentioned, they need to make sure they can drag this across the finish line. There is clutch potential on G2. There's always has been. And as we do have Doki still up on the top floor, whereas Eno and Virtue find themselves on the sides, a flank is not to be written out and could be coming in at a huge moment in time. They're just getting that read. They're finding out where Naif is. Doki is that loose thread, that sort of problem child that might rear their head and kick up a bit of a tantrum with guns, but they're sort of not focused about it right now. If they can get the safety on Canadian, they might go for a bit of reverse plant. They just need to keep the vertical control. So Doki has to move at this point. The touch player close on right, they're still not confident. So pamba has gone even wider to try and find a fight elsewhere that Doki's heard the read on. Whether it was called by something on a cam or not, you can see this change of place and they look a little bit nervous here, Dark Zero. We have a player sitting in the corner there, Uno on the Tuberau. As soon as Canadian doesn't check this and just goes for a blind plant, it could be the end of that plant even going down altogether as Virtue opens up. The first kill has gone away from them here and that just ramps it up even more. Doki on the hop out, rotate. Jumped out the side, find the head of Polo. Threw himself off the building to get that kill. And now everything is starting to fall away. Doki, a super oh! from the man himself. Canadian still. It is that sort of strange moment that it is that aspect of Dark Zero that we keep finding ourselves in. But the compliments, every talent and every sort of team's been able to pay them and their game. This event has been the adaptations they've brought, the late round fire that hasn't otherwise existed from them before. It just takes a second to get themselves onto the advantage they had. They know they can find the G2's players. In the gun game, they've done it multiple times, sometimes to their success, sometimes to their detriment. To go from their last confrontation on this map, being a one-rounder to this, one-rounder wayer, shows the growth. However, the other two from this tournament were both 5'7". They don't want to keep that as a trend. They don't want that on a, on a poster. They don't want that on a statistics site. The break of the floor is shown, gets gold open. Gives them a prepared route through onto the side itself. But the first to go is a Bencher. Gets the lockdown as NJR finally gets the breach onto the angle onto Geisha. The player rotates around towards the back end box. They're seeing if they can get this, the punishment on the swing shotgun player. But they cannot go in themselves because all the angles are there. NJR gets one, gets two. 
A drive as Benger at least finds a single for G2, but NJR's rested a huge bit of control. G2, they're rotating underneath Doki on the main stairs. Might be in the side of Benger and a thorn that the lion doesn't quite predict. Bolo, he's either side, but NJR screaming. Canadian themselves gets the oh, kick. Doki! 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 Gets the kick before it's confirmed. NJR has to ace this round. you would compliment them the hard pill to swallow it was a 5-2 for them for a, a long time this was their map to lock in imagine the energy into the second map here now i sort of took the history of these two teams and when they played this uh, map on si 2023 it was 7-5 so the growth that they had on skyscraper if dz could manage it on this map well then it would be a, a 14 to 5 so a bit of a better growth here I don't think that's of course possible though. Nate, a man at the moment, a man to keep eyes on. Doesn't like that hand sanitizer, but does like getting the kill on anyone who might drop onto gold hatch. Good fall back there just in time because they were basically on him out there. If he would have stayed a second longer, he would have dropped before he was able to actually fall back oh. down the stairs. Huge. Like the lockers coming down there. Yeah, huge, huge amount of gadgetry around the side of lockers, the maestro bubbles. You know you're going to be battling against NJR smoke canisters, the Echo drones alongside Bolo as well. And then you've got Goyo. This is truly set up. It's a very, Same very long, shot. very, very deep war of utility attrition. There's going to be a little quick play against the second bubble. There is the destruction of some of those canisters as well. G2 getting as much of this work done early on. They've already removed, I think, two of the bubbles. There's at least one left in this situation. There was a grenade rolled, but I don't think we got to see whether it entirely got its victim or if there's just two that are similarly based. No, because I think they went for that one. There's also a bulletproof. They know what take they're trying to stop. Yeah, definitely so. And as Doki is now forced back in the bar where her being on fire and being shot out through the window, it's in oh. here and it goes down. Instead, Doki not able to get the kill. They've dropped in the vault hatch right behind them, hit gold. They said Nape was the stopping point for that position and he was in tile. He removed Uno. Gets the plant locked in. He's going to find a flawless. And I said the momentum they could take from Dark Zero after what happened at the end of the last map to leading into this one yeah. could be tragic. A flawless is the opener. Looking for the first kill, the first bite, and I'm really excited if Virtus is going to go up through a hatch here right next to Nafe. It makes a lot of noise. And they got to ensure that there's at least noise being made elsewhere. What does that? A boogie drone. Nothing can be blamed on you missing it. If you're entirely surrounded by this, they are not. Hitting the hatch directly as of yet. The rotation onto the procs, the play on beepers. You can see someone's coming above him onto top white. Uno is trying to force the players further out. Nafe goes down. Virtue must be up and in the sight. No. Up towards the hatch, potentially. Or we had a rotate down from Nafe. But in the meantime, NJR taking pressure on towards Benjamaster here. Pamba gets Uno. Dark Zero held on. But the trade out from Doki, the lion across the top floor. They have a lot of time. Can they try and find a pocket of space? That's the big question as Virtue holding off on the angle two plays from G to still left up above as Canadian finds himself inside of archives. Didn't get droned out, but the drone was shot, so Virtue definitely does have an ID of that there's someone present out there. Another E1D pulses out and everybody finds themselves unfortunately stationary apart from NJR, who's sent to the station of hell. They're coming just deep onto the corner box. Canadians are back line with a triple on the back of it. He's locked out two. Two in a row. And after that one, the side started being hit. Nothing really being out there anymore to stop the from the truly the moving through. This Canadian gets the opening kill onto Benja. Much better here from Dark Zero. They're sort of stepping into the approach. I think they realized how much territory they handed G2 to be exploratory. They were dipping their toes in every single take possible. And there's some toes that are absolutely torn off. Alamau caught in the back. And this is a bit of a sort of wake up for both teams, I think. As I said, much better change of pace. Nafe just misses an opportunity onto Virtue. But as he saw the rotation, he's almost guaranteed to call that out to Bolo. He saw playing around these positions before. 
Still on the hatch, though. They've actually just opted to retreat. Yeah, there's only a single player, Dark Zero, on the side before Canadian dropped down. So I think they're going to be focusing more on the actual side itself now. Nave on the hunt, going over to the top floor. He's going to see if he can do anything vertically. Whilst Virtue waiting patiently near the elevator hatch for a potential drop or a misstep of one of these players. Canadian got quite close there. Just kept himself out of range, however. I mean, I much sort of... I appreciate more this approach here from Dark Zero because you have Nave on a solace. Virtue takes the drop. Zuno gets MJR. Virtue might get punished by Canadian and is. That's the kit locked inside the elevator hat. Zuno and Doki both suffering scrape. Name still above has the full vertical control at this point. As these two are battling in a site, it is butchery to fish in a barrel. As long as they can do what they did in the previous round, Dark Zero, take the players, push E2 to the sort of width of bank and give them the full stretch and. If they can deposit a couple more bodies. Now, the way this usually goes is pretty similar to the actual CEO side. We'll have people present near stock as Bolo is. An aggressive quite there as well. But we also have them inside the janitor just to block off any of the repels to come through. Good use of the gadget out there. And JR's inside and JR's outside. Alamau has the lockdown and the pinch on the player. That means now that Bolo's rotation is gone. So is Doki, Nay. It's a bit of revenge for the fights and the kills these two have had over the previous map. Fun fact, when G2 was in an SI final last year, he actually typed shout out Nate into the all chat. I remember that. So it'll be very funny to see the response on this side. Bolo gets the take onto Uno. And as I said, he'd lost his rotate option. Now they're losing all the players. Alamau somehow gets a scream through onto Canadian. Inside, getting the kit done. This is the problems on the retake. They're having to move quite quickly here. The three remaining players, and Alamau's not entirely secure yet because, well, there's no G2 to offer some support. Benja, he's inside open. Virtue's trying to rotate his way up green to just get the crosswatch. Here it goes down again, but a solace. Well, they're fishing, and unfortunately, they are a little bit too late. No! Just in time! Pamba cuts Alamau, cuts the kit. Nate cuts the stairs in half. Benja alone in a one versus three. This gives his game away. They give their game of saying, I'm not going to take this fight yet. They don't need to. They don't want to. Attackers recovered the bomb diffuser. Aware of the fact that the diffuser has been recovered, and as soon as Benja's going to start, they should be aware. Oh. Oh, he's off. Yeah, he's going off. He's just trying to bait out the Solace now, knowing Pamba's still around, and that plant will never happen as long as they are. This is usually why you need to have someone on the top floor to provide yourself with that verticality. It's the impossibility of this site. It's the impossibility of this site on the other sort of flip half as well as Benja. He realizes they're not giving him anything. We saw all three DZ players go wider and wider, further away. He's able to take out Nafe. But look at the positions of Pamba and Bolo. Pamba's still above the second that kit Starts to hit the ground. There's the reveal. Here's the shotgun fight. And there is two apiece. They used to. I think lessons learned from that previous video. A minute gone. G2 there. Closer to the site, but they don't have the control above. Doki cannot win out the first engagement. They had an awareness on each other. Canadian is looking for a second. It's Benja, but Benja's dropped from locked inside the site. They turn their back to all of these fights where Dark Zero have a little bit more intel, a little bit more of an idea of G2's approach. Virtue up the white stairs with Bolo more than ready. And there's the demonstration. A bit of a slip, a bit of a snafu out on the back. I'm assuming that was from a gunfight. Loading new mag. But Alamau's now on a sliver of health, and you're still looking at, you know, a side of one of those impacts, the C4 itself. And that'll be the end of his life this round. Yeah, and it should be a Dark Zero round. They have complete control of the site. They have complete control of the top floor as well. And even though it's a mid... Elamau dropped to his death. Uh... That happens, you know. <laughs> <laughs> um... The joke's coming out. Now, who knows in a 1v5 situation? Let's go for an ace clutch. I mean... Mistakes <laughs> happen. There we go. The ending is there. Didn't want to extend the suffering for more than it had to be. And as Bolo, again on the Yokai, this time there is no IQ to stop that. Nope.
there is no commando drones to steal things as well. None of uh, that cover and split. There is still a burn of utility. The blinds come out with nothing behind them. Very loud gadget, both visually and in the audio game. So it sort of will force a bit of fear into the players. Doki's getting the reveal of the swing. They know they cannot just push up dirt without taking a direct engagement. They might not know that the player has left. Now they'll have the reveal. Canadian in the core of the map playing his favorite thing, which is an intel gatherer from range. Pulse is often the sighted one. Great removal of utility. Two minutes and they've already got rid of all of those Goyo canisters. As they find a fight, they went in and then right out. Canadian with the heartbeat at the full read, the E1B. A little bit too late there to stop that kill. Yeah, a bit of an unlucky moment there for G2. The LMO met with Canadian, but at least the trade comes in. Venture, right. oh, however, gets pre-fired, and that's a diffuser now dropped in the hands of Nave. Who didn't opt to drop as well, stayed on top of the hatch. You can see he flirted with the idea for a second, but I think he saw the kid hit the ground and said, I'm going to stick around, see what else I can do. Three versus three. Virtue, he's sort of caught in the bit of a middle here. He needs to go and recollect that kit. He's the closest man, but with a minute 30, they can rotate and the pings are still on him. You wonder if it's a Valcam, you wonder what the read is. Hope it's not a default, but as they opt to go for a slightly longer engagement, Virtue, he's expecting the fight, the swing. It's Pamba that just sort of says, I'm here, and then heads off, wastes a bit more time, wastes a little bit more of this precious sort of utility that Dark Zero struggled with last map. A minute left, and I still think both those Yoko drones are on the board. One of them was in lobby. That must have been the intel that was being fed about Virtue's positioning, closing in on the player in Elevator. And as 55 seconds are left, you just see G2 are preparing themselves, are preparing angles. Uno is looking to go for a point. No, actually, it's not Uno. It's Virtue that has to go for the pickup, because Uno is going to be probably jumping in after those Candelas to see what he can do. Now, as Bolo rotates the Echo Drones round with the amount of time left, they have the charges to dictate the story of this, put themselves onto the 4-2 split, 30 seconds, and Uno, he's dicing and dancing around a drop that you assume Dark Zero are going to pay a little bit more attention to, but there's a rotate coming up the stairs. The Valkyrie's gone on an adventure. They're going to see if they can find an engagement. If Uno gets caught here, it could all be over. The long throw, the play, they've gone two stories up. Bolo, he's alone in the sight as the pressure goes around. Nave, he may as well be in Narnia. The two versus one with five seconds. He's quickly rotating. Round onto the back, but Doki had it watched. G2 keeping things level in the first half. Oh, that's for sure, and you know, this is where it really starts coming on into play. There's a quick push attempt going to be made. Virtue completely blinded, but no one follows up on it. The drone was given away the intel. Canadian still is around with that drone, but as Candela's not finding anything now. They're in, and they're off to the races here. There's the cover, and there's the kill. There's a drop in the hatch in the middle. Do they know there's a rotation round? There's a player right on the hatch here as well. This is a surrounded situation. Alamau, he's holding on. He isn't too far away from a fight with Pamba. He really desperately wants to take it. The smoke canister forces Pamba out of position. And there it is. Beautifully played with Benja getting one of his own. Bolo's gone. The refusal to hand over open area. The refusal to give up the ground leads to a little bit more success here. A very long use of the exit Kairos to get the hatch open. Only two more pellets left in pocket there. I think that will open up the hatch, yeah, nicely. But that means that if anything else is going to be closed, well, you are not going to be opening that because you only have those two pellets left. So that is a concern for potentially later. Uh, think of the mirror windows, for example. Those are going to be in play. You're going to have to worry about them one way or another. And with a minute 20 left on the clock, it is, uh, you know, a 4-3 and three situation in favor of G2. But Dark Zero really haven't done that much yet. They're only now starting to get themselves into the top four. But Doki's still around. So if there is a drone going to be leading it, Oh. Removed NGR from the board and instantly falls back towards the lobby because he knows Nafe is out here. I mean, there's a player on his left and a player on his right. Where are you going to go, Nafe? You've got to find a fight either way. Benja gets a big scrape onto the Habano. He's just going to try and angle themselves forward and at least put a wall to their back. The break on the hatch, the break on their face. Leaves Canadian inside the site alone with a kid. They retake it aggressively. 
going to sort of keep themselves a bit further away from these immediate engagements and let Dark Zero do a bit of structural work. But that's the thing, right? They don't need to take these fights right now. There is a little bit of pressure coming down, but nothing directly too threatening Point onto back. the side. There's like two players or three players on Repel even. Oh, what are they going to do from there on? Sure, they can, you know, fire in some Xkaros and open up onto Kanto, but... Oh, again, like, it limits your movement just slightly. It isn't the end of the world. Pamba now finds himself entered and exited in the building within a second. Another pulse, another hold, and another section where the players are forced to think about the actions that have occurred. The and the that's the problem here for Dark Zero. Every the moment where they have to sit in a deficit is devastating. Doki has the perfect read on the player, slightly hidden behind that speaker. You know, it's only going to be a moment before Nafe's under a bout of pressure he didn't expect. As Ben just surrounded, there it is. Alamau gets Nafe inside stock. Ben just sitting, holding, wasting time and attention and a body. Benja gets one. He's been revealed this entire time. He's about to have a second swing from Canadian. They're looking for the sliver and they sort of shoot across the bow. There's the execute. But with Toki getting Canadian, NJR, all that's left of this round, and he started it on those big windows on a fight. Getting another kill on the back of it. It's exits in this moment. It's two stories of problems. There goes Virtue. 40 seconds, you can see G2, they pull themselves a bit back. Let's not get it too silly. We can still pop fire and we have these sort of power corners, but NJR's got a great gun and a very good handle on it. They rotate vertically. G2, they've headed towards the top floor. Not entirely sure where the kit has gone down, but it's not in the pockets of NJR right now. Ah, yep, tell us. So NJR, they're just not giving him an engagement at this point. I said they sort of had fun with the fights. The beepers go off, they know exactly where he is. G2, three rounds in a row, five to three. But we're up on the top floor. And this one is the hardest one to actually defend. 48% of the rounds that have been played over the six invitational have gone towards the defenders once you were on the top floor. So Dark Zero, you got to prove you can attack. You gotta prove you can do it on this site. As you've done before. But of course, G2 haven't played it yet during SI, so there is a lot of uncertainty in what they'll do and what they'll bring and how you need to face it. The first reveal the round onto the back of Reloading. just trying to catch that loose wing is, is that idea that's being brought here. Canadian on the jackal, an operator that has said. There's two stacks, two stories, and two ways of getting it. But if they've misplaced Benja, well, that's going to be something that haunts them later. Well, yeah, there's no misplace. They have the hot drone information, but the longer they go without getting anything on the back of it, the more of a nightmare this will become. Do you want to take this as a flat fight here? Canadian, no! There's one, there's two! Oh, fucking believable, Benja! What a force he has been at this tournament, a return to where he was. He's on the third here. The C4 over for the one. He can't quite get it. He's surrounded. He's able to get it. What? Swinging either side. The pendulum of death bouncing back and forth amongst the grenades is finally stopped. But all the time, all the bodies, all the places, players and utility wasted by the boy Wonder. The teamwork that not in order from Dark Zero. The, the, the first of all, the solo fight from Canadian. You needed to just instantly collapse on them together. And now Virtue waiting at the top of the stairs with Alamau as they pop up. It's a clean up. G2. I mean, what a well-earned grin. G2 have gotten better and better and better. And Dark Zero have that ability, have that capability. But a roster against the tide of Brazil and against the room louder than anyone could ever imagine have the hardest job they have ever had.
We find ourselves in lockers with a heavy roam from G2. Dark Zero, their main goal will be to clear that out. But a minute has passed and only now they start opening up from the top to the first. But even then they won't find themselves within any success. Benja, again in a crucial position, receiving some vertical pressure. Also someone on the main stage, Pamba. If he manages to shut this first one down, it is game over for Dark Zero. Every engagement has to be perfect. And Benja is that poster child of perfection. Canadian hits back against Doki. The IDL with more experience than any others is here, but so is Alamau. There's a full stop to NJR's sentence. Pamba's holding and waiting, but there is only so long, he isn't even rewarded. A missed moment as the ship breezes past in the broad daylight. Shined upon here in Sao Paulo. A four to three body advantage with a minute left to go. So much utility in the hands of Dark Zero, but there's nothing they can really do with it. The hard breach gadgets won't help. The fire caught by the Surya laser gate. There's so much to do. There is so little control and there is not enough time as they're eyeing up to go for a hot drop. Canadian walking in. They're hoping for the best. Will it be enough? That's a big question. Here it goes, exploding across, but Benja gets his second for the round and shuts down Pamba before he can fully even let loose with the LMG Canadian on the back of a long range smoke. It is a technical two versus two. Azuno's hit the ground, but Adam out. He's hit the roof. He sees the player in the 